I'm Alan Willard, and I'm going to talk about the uh, water plane example project that I've put together. Um, I wanted to have a few different types of water that um, people could use for their own projects. Uh, the first one that I made was ocean water, and I wanted ocean water to have a few properties. Uh, one was that it could have very large coarse waves, uh, and when they peaked, I wanted to have uh, a nice sea foam that would blend in uh, when the water peaks, as you can see here. I also wanted to be able to define the size, so that if you have a large uh, ocean scene, or if you wanted to build a very customized scene with, with this type of waveform, you could do that very easily. Now, any type of water surface is going to be made up of a couple different things. The first is going to be the mesh. So the first thing I did was create a simple plain mesh that is fairly tessellated so that when you apply the material that does all of the waves, it would have some uh, a number of vertices to work with. So you'd see this uh, wave shape quite well. Uh, of course, you also need a material. So for the ocean, uh, I created a ocean water material. And this has a couple of different things uh, inside of it. The first is that I'm projecting all of my textures in world space. And that means that wherever it is in your environment, it will always look uh, like the water is is a consistent surface. So even if you have two waters butting up to each other, uh, they'll seamlessly transition into one another. Uh, I also wanted to have uh, a few different shapes of waves being blended together. So each of these blocks that looks something like this is getting the wave, or the world position of the, the pixel, setting up some scale values, um, and then ultimately going into this uh, motion function within the material that combines all of the textures together uh, in a somewhat chaotic pattern. I'll preview that and you should be able to see what this looks like. So this is the largest waves uh, being blended together and they're all moving in uh, slightly different directions. I do that a couple of times because I wanted to have um, blends between all of these uh, different wave types so that you don't see tiling as easily. I also have the ocean water color and a second color which is the Fresnel color. And that Fresnel color is what's giving us the uh, subtle lighter blues that are blended in with the deeper water. And here that's being blended together. If we look at that directly you'll see I get a fall off where, in this case, the lighter blue is pointed directly at the camera and the darker blues are on the outside where the surface tends to fall off. There's a switch which blends in the seafoam. Uh, if you want, you can choose not to have the seafoam. Uh, given that this is a larger ocean scene, I, I wanted to have that turned on. And the seafoam is done essentially by looking at how high the highest points on these waves are and then working out um, the results of that to create a mask. So here we have the same kind of four-way blend of the foam being blended together and then it goes and gets modulated with this mass value. So the lightest parts of this mask are where the foam is actually going to show up on my final surface. That then gets blended in with the final color values and begins to show up on the surface in the world. Uh, there's a couple of other things. Uh, one, we have a reflection cube map that's being blended in uh, optionally so that if we want to have um, some uh, simulated reflections for the surface, we can easily turn that on. Now, all of these material properties are exposed inside of the instance value, which is the uh, object you see here. This is the material instance itself before it's been applied to the scene. And a lot of the parameters I was just talking about are exposed here. So I can choose to turn off the seafoam. It will recompile the shader. And then in my scene, 
I'm no longer getting seafoam because the uh, surface you're seeing here is created from that material instance. So turn that back on so we have our foam back and we instantly see that change. So going back to here, uh, I can do quite a few things such as change the color, uh, change values for how my ocean water is going to look. Of course I can do that in real time, so if I go over here and go back to my darker blue, I have my ocean water back. But I wanted to make this very easy for the end user to place in the scene. So I created a blueprint, and the blueprint for this starts off with just the simple water plane with the material applied. And then inside of my construction script, I take that water plane and create a dynamic material to apply to it so that I can make these changes in real time. Uh, I then also define the scale of the water plane in the world so that I can uh, have it fill any size area that I, that I care for. Uh, and then going back up, I'm also defining all these parameters and setting them. And this means that in my final blueprint, I have access to all of these when I place it in the scene, so I can make changes to it uh, dynamically. Now, all of the behavior you see here is done in the construction script. There's nothing in the event graph. There's no real-time behavior for this water. But when I click on it, I now have my water selected, and I can change these scaling values and get a very different amount of water in both size and scale. In this case, what I'm doing is changing the actual projected scale of the water. So it's not changing the extents of the water. You can still see the water is constrained within this little uh, simple lagoon that I built. But if I change my water scale on the X and Y planes, you can see I get a much larger surface of water because this water scale X and Y is defining the actual physical extents of the water. And then I can increase my displacement and get very, very strong or very weak amounts of seafoam and wave peaks and everything else. The tessellation factor affects uh, how much the water is tessellated based on the camera distance. Uh, a higher tessellation factor will keep the majority of the water surface tessellated more often. A lower one, and it will only tessellate when it's very, very close to the camera. Uh, I also included some values for uh, adjusting the amount of normal contribution. Uh, right now, if I bring down the amplification of the large normals, you'll see while I still am getting the geometric waves, they're not showing up as much in the visual uh, aspect of the, the ocean water. But if I increase this again, I start to see more of the, the wave shape uh, affecting the, re the reflection of the scene and the colors. And then the small normals are the somewhat chaotic uh, subwaves or wavelets that are being blended in with the entire wave uh, shader to control how much breakup there is so that it's not just the larger wave shapes moving around. I also created several other types of waveform or of water shapes. So here we have more of a lake water. The waves are much smaller. There's no displacement being done. So we have a much more uh, still surface. The wave speed controls the actual frequency of the ripples. So if you don't want them to ripple very quickly, you can turn that down. And then the biggest difference, other than the displacement, is that we have still areas on this water. The water surface is done in a very similar manner. We have a material called lake water. And this material does the same world projection but it does not include things like the displacement, the sea foam, uh, and some of the other secondary effects that were applied within 
the uh, ocean water. Here, however, our variation is where we are able to bring in stillness. So the greater the variation amount, the fewer large ripples that will be visible on the water. And this simulates areas of different depth that you'll commonly see on smaller bodies of water, things like lakes. Similar to the ocean water, we have the ability to pick different colors. So if I wanted to have a very different looking scene, I could do that very easily by changing the sliders and coming up with a very different realistic or non at my discretion uh, appearance for my water. And just like the water, uh, the ocean water, I can control the physical extents of the water as well as the scaling of the material properties on the surface of the water. So the final uh, water example that I built is a translucent water. Um, to create good reflections on the surface, we're using a, a cube map that allows me to make easy changes to how the surface is going to render. So inside of this shader, because there are a few differences given that it's translucent, I have an additional uh, setup that allows me to bring in a cube map, uh, which I've parameterized so that if you want to change that to suit your own environment, you can do so very easily. Uh, and then it also uh, has some controls for how strong that reflection is. Now you might notice that the uh, surface seems to render oddly in the preview window. That's intentional and I'll explain why in just a second. So all of the same uh, wave shapes are possible in the translucent water, the same as the lake water and ocean water. However, one major difference, uh, as I was mentioning earlier, is this uh, clipping that you see here. That's done because I wanted to have a very nice, smooth shoreline and also control the depth of the water. So if you see here, deeper down in the water, it gets darker. And there's a deep water color and a shallow water color exposed in the material properties. What that does is we project the depth of the water through using the camera. So in, in essence, we're looking to see how far above or below the surface the, the water actually is. Um, and then within that shader result, I can control how it resolves the, the scene on the other side. So if I change this color uh, in any of a number of ways, you can see it changes what the deeper water looks like. It, it tints it, in this case, a, a darker blue-purple. If I wanted to make something that was a little more, say, pollution colored, it'd be pretty easy as well. Set the shallow water color. And then the color of the water surface is defined by the primary and secondary water colors. So I can change that again. We can get a very uh, chemical stained look quite easily. But if I, if I move my camera through the surface of the water, you can see there's not any uh, volumetric depth to that. This is very much a uh, material surface effect. Just like the lake water, the variation is the amount of stillness that's being applied to that final surface. And to show what this water would look like without uh, being a blueprint, which is actually pretty important, uh, I'm going to drop in that mesh that we're using and I'm going to scale it up approximately the same size and I'm going to apply that translucent material in, uh, instance to it. Now it's pretty much exactly on the same plane as the other water but if you watch what happens when I move it up you can see it, it does not appear to be doing what you would expect. Um, it's being projected into space within the material. And this is why the blueprint is extremely important. Inside of the material property, we have a height value that's being fed here. 
And that water depth is based on the actual object's position in space. The blueprint internally automatically updates that value and feeds it into the material instance applied to the surface. So wherever in space your um, blueprint uh, water surface is, the water will correctly um, interpolate the values for both the depth and also the shoreline. Because inside of the shoreline, I can control that depth. And you can see how soft or sharp that value becomes. Value between 10 and 16 gives you a nice soft shoreline without looking too much like it's uh, uh, completely invisible water at the edge. Uh, and then the depth scale controls how rapidly you interpolate between the deep and the shallow watercolors. So these are all meant to be uh, starting points so that you can take this and build your own water surface out of them. Uh, water is almost always a complicated material type so I hope we've given you good examples to uh, choose your the, the type of water you're looking for and begin building something that uh, works well for your projects.